My name is MJ Gordon, minimalist mom and entrepreneur here to help you level up your energy so you can level up your life. So I've had this swirling thought the last couple weeks and I've, I've tried to film this video three times. So I'm just going to have a conversation with you and try to be as direct with my thoughts as possible. But I'm at this precipice in my life where things are about to change fast. And I've spent the last three or four years working really hard and diligently to make this action occur. And what I'm finding is now that I stand on the cliff ready to cross over, there is some resistance. There's this lack of motivation, quite a feeling of burning out, a lot of questioning whether or not I'm about to enter into the right realm or not. And this is largely due to the fact that I have approached this scenario completely different than I typically approach most scenarios in my life. Um, most forms of abundance or amazing unexplainable results I have found in a completely different way. And what I mean by this is that I feel in our life, abundance flows in and out in multiple different ways, um, call them vehicles for lack of a better word. And I think the most common vehicle that we're familiar with is the setting a goal, setting that intention, grind, 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 do whatever it takes to make it happen. We'll call this vehicle the make it happen way. But then there's this other vehicle that has been tried and true, and I would be lying to say that it didn't exist because it completely exists in my life, whether um, it's science-based or not, or just theoretics. It's just something that has rendered a lot better results for me. And that vehicle, let's call it the law of attraction. Now, before you get all scared, let me just first explain what the law of attraction means to me. I believe that the law of attraction is about setting forth an intention, an idea, and an energy and moving forward with that intent and drawing upon resources, experiences, open doors and pathways to make or manifest this situation to occur. What I've experienced in my life, however, is that a lot of times what ends up happening ends up being a ton better than what I originally planned. And I think this is largely because of the openness and the positivity and sort of idealism that comes with this type of mindset. So I want to be clear here that this has nothing to do with sitting, doing nothing, wishing and hoping until the fairy godmother appears. It's completely different from that. I believe that the law of attraction is about being open, fluid and flexible. Whereas the make it happen is about being decided, dedicated and consistent. Neither vehicle is wrong, but they're both very different. And a lot of times I feel that we might try to make the paths cross, but they don't really mix. It doesn't mean that you don't have the same goals for both vehicles. It just means that the intention, energy and course of action are com two completely different paths. So this led me to the thought of sharing with you how I've managed to make law of attraction work in my life. And upon reflecting, on it, it's no surprise that I discovered minimalism was a huge key to helping boost, enhance, and maybe even tip over the results of having the law of attraction actually work. So before we get into that, I'd like to share with you a couple ways that this has worked for me in my life, because I want you to see how this clearly is unexplainable circumstances and not just a practical, logical roundabout way of getting to things. And, and I want this to like really sink in because I think it matters and I think it's important. Um, sometimes when I hang on too much to logic, which I have a tendency to do, then I tend to overthink and overcomplicate things. And that's the complete opposite vibration of what makes law of attraction manifest, or at least the way I've experienced it in my life. So the first way this happened was we were working normal jobs. We had flexible jobs and they were good. But when my daughter was first born, we really wanted to be able to stay home together and focus on the kids. And while it didn't feel fair to ask for that, because so many parents work Sometimes both parents work, you know, felt kind of like guilty. We decided to let that notion go and just put the question out there and hope that we receive an answer. I know it sounds like totally crazy, but what happened the next day was my husband came home and he was released from his job at the end of the month due to his boss going on tour the next year. So they would technically resume work the year following. But it was a great answer, um, which inadvertently led me to respond to a letter that I had gotten in the mail from Google, which fast forward, we became one of the first YouTube influencers before the word influencer was even out there and before AdRev was open to everybody and anybody. And so we made really good money doing that, enough to be able to stay home with our kids, 
work together, vlogging, traveling, and just focus on raising our girls. This was something I could not have ever imagined. I never even knew it existed. I never knew what it was when I signed up for the letter. I didn't, I didn't foresee this whole world that's going on here ever even coming to fruition. I just knew that I posted some video albums. I had no idea they were public. I had posted them for some family. And when I logged on, there were all these random people that were commenting on my post and ta-da, we became YouTubers. I have hundreds of endless stories that are crazy like this. And they're crazy because they're life altering, they're changing, it's like magic, and it's completely unexplainable. But what I do know is there is a sort of process or a very similar mindset and flow of life that I had in every single occurrence that I've experienced. So let's dive into that. It comes down to minimalism. Is minimalism the answer to everything? I don't know, but in this case, it very well seems to be. Minimalism helped enhance and make the law of attraction actually work in my life. Looking back, if I had not been practicing these deeper philosophies of minimalism, I don't think these results would have actually happened. So there are four ways I've seen extreme similarities in all of these occurrences in my life, and they've all been rooted in minimalism. The first way is intent. In minimalism, we talk first and foremost, what is your intent? What is important to you? What adds value to you? When you focus on something that you want out of life, instead of just, oh, it would be nice to have that car, it'd be nice to get rich and famous, but when you start to focus on the real true meaning of what's gonna make you happy, be it good health or contributing something positive to life or raising a family or even just the mere idea of just being content, this allows you to focus on a good result. So you're not unhappy with the result because the result is rooted in a true intention that is actually aligned with your values and priorities. The second thing that minimalism has done for me is it's removed all the distractions and improved my focus. So when I wake up, I'm not distracted by all these things around me. I'm really just excited about this intention, this new idea. It's not like a business idea where I've, I've decided and I'm set out and I've got this whole to-do list. It's just this new inspiration of how I'm living my life and what I'm working Working towards without really having a set pathway towards it. But having that focus is really easy to have when there aren't 10 other things that are calling to me. I wasn't trying to do all these things all at once. If I was doing all of them at once, it was simply just because an inspiration had occurred. It was just like, oh, this sounds like a fun idea. Let me give it a try. And it just had this same open, excited, a hopeful and uplifted vibe as what I would experience when I was envisioning what I would like my life to look like in the next two to five years. The next thing minimalism did was sharpen my alignment in my focus and intent. Because things were simple, it was I was able to flow with ease. So without so many things distracting my mind or so many things to do or attend to, I was able to have more awareness towards opportunities, inspirations, creative thinking. I had this space to take action. When my, if my life is full and it's complicated, I'm spending all this time stressing about trying to do all the things because I haven't eliminated the unimportant from my life, there isn't much space to flow and take action. And even if you feel like you're creative and wanna flow and take action, you feel kind of like, oh, I'm tired, I don't know if I should do that now. And there's this, all this conflicting notion that you have to contend with. The fourth thing that minimalism did for me was allow me to be open and not stress and not rush. I was unattached to what the end result was, but I was very attached to what the end result is. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. But let me explain. I really wanted to feel at that time in my life, I wanted to feel healthy. I wanted to feel like I had energy. I wanted to feel like I was in love with my relationship again, like money flowed easily to me, like I could live my everyday vacation, be a good mom, and just enjoy my life. And so those things are very specific, but what wasn't specific was 
where I lived, what job I was working, how many hours a day I was working, how many children I had, uh, what car I drove, what I looked like, or you know, if I was healthy and fit, with, if I had an eight pack or a six pack, or none of those things really mattered. All that mattered to me was the end result of my experience. And when you live a life of simplicity and you're already identifying what your priorities are, most of the time these things come first already. And so they're already fulfilled. Many uh, material on Law of Attraction talks about live life as if it's already happened. Well, how does that work? Well, if you say already are a healthy person, then you're probably health-minded, health-oriented. You're probably not eating the cake. You're probably not skipping gym time. Or if you're trying to improve your energy, you're probably not pushing yourself until you're burning out. You're probably taking the time to sleep better. And so when you put these things first, all of a sudden the priorities start becoming fulfilled, whether or not you have reached that overarching goal you are already content and happy with the flow of your current life. It's already moving you in that direction. So there is no rush. You only know that it's, it's going to be inevitable. It's only going to occur eventually. So when I look at this, I ask myself, what does this mean for my life now? Because I'm feeling that burnout and I am feeling this, that creative inspiration, but this feeling and need to do all these things well. I'm dropping a lot of things. I'm cutting out things that I am inspired by and picking just the one or two things. I am cutting the excess work, um, the excess things in my house and just really focusing on the things that are lighting up um, in my field of vision. And so that's really difficult to describe because I think a lot of us find ourselves in the situation where we have to pick and choose rather than, you know, I'm bored, what do I do? It's like, well, wh which of these should I do and what one should I eliminate? I have never listened to these notions and been unhappy with the results. I have, however, been stubborn and said, no, nope, this practically makes sense and on paper, and you know, money this or results that or all these numbers, statistics, you know, mathematics, blah, 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 and, and been unhappy because at the end of the day, it's not necessarily about, again, the car that you drive or how much money you make or the house that you own. It really is about, are you fulfilled? Are you able to create a life that you love waking up to? There was this quote that I just pulled um, today. It's by Seth Godin. It says, instead of wondering when your next vacation is, maybe you should set up a life you don't need to escape from. And that was just, Ah, it was just so perfect because this is what the everyday vacation is all about. And so I realized when I can focus on that, the letting go, the removal of the excess, it's easy. And I know that as soon as I do these manifestations of the law of attraction, just the things that I intend to draw into my life, create for my life is only going to happen quicker with more ease, less stress. And so, yeah, that's where I am. And I just wanted to share that with you folks, because I thought that this was not just monumental, but a huge part of my process, um, for literally everything. And so I hope that gives you some insight and value as to the power of minimalism, the power of intent and the power of just flowing, just let it go, trust a little bit and just put it out there and do what feels right. And just trust that life is abundant and it will be. Thank you for joining me here. If you like this video, make sure you comment, hit the like button and subscribe for more. I'll catch y'all in the next episode.